Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sara the Brick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said on Oman's blessed re Renaissance Day on July 23rd, wishing the brotherly Omani people further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's wide leadership. His Majesty the King praised the constantly developing amicable ties between the two countries and people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on the occasion of the July Revolution anniversary, wishing the Egyptian people more prosperity and praising the amicable ties between the two countries and people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa paid a visit to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa at his palace in Rafah. His Majesty praised the great role played by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister in promoting the government's work and developing it to meet the needs of citizens, their service requirements, and enhancing the citizens' position as a central target for comprehensive development. His Majesty commended the government's endeavors to increase productivity and establish the principles of competitiveness and sustainable development in supporting the national economy, despite challenges to serve the nation and the citizens. His Majesty said that the Kingdom of Bahrain is always moving steadily towards further progress and prosperity in various fields, and it is with the determination of its sincere people that it continues uh, to take the lead in development and leadership in various fields. His Majesty the King praised the continuous achievements made by the Kingdom of Bahrain in various sectors, expressing his pride in the success of the Bahraini people, which is always a source of pride. He also praised the achievement of the granddaughter of His Royal Highness, the Second Lieutenant Sheikh Aisha bin Rashid Al Khalifa, in her first flight in a military aircraft, stressing that this success reaffirms the Bahraini women's capabilities and their owners of determination and the spirit of challenge. The Prime Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for his visit and the continued work to improve him performance, which makes the output of the government work at the levels that achieve aspirations of citizens to our serving environment characterized by quality and efficiency, and in order to achieve the royal aspirations and directives in this regard. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said of Oman on the occasion of the Blessed Renaissance Day anniversary, wishing the Omani Sultanate abundant health and happiness and the brotherly Omani people more prosperity under His Majesty the Sultan's leadership. He hailed the fraternal ties, wishing them further growth and development. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, also sent a similar congratulatory cable to Sultanate of Oman's Deputy Prime Minister Fahad bin Mahmoud Al side. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on the glorious uh, July Revolution anniversary. His Royal Highness, the Premier, wished uh, the Egyptian President lasting good health and well being and his country further progress and prosperity, praising the strong bilateral ties between the two countries and people in numerous fields. His Royal Highness, the Premier, also sent a similar congratulatory cable to Egyptian Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister uh, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today the Secretary General of the Gulf Corporation Council, the GCC, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Gulf Corporation Council, the GCC, is a system that has been established for the interests of the GCC country's people, stating that the fulfilling people's needs and the citizens' aspirations requires intensified efforts to strengthen solidarity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister asserted the Kingdom's keenness on supporting the initiatives that enhance the GCC march 
and protect the unity and solidarity of its people. His Royal Highness stressed that Saudi Arabia is the main supporter of the GCC and all its members. He affirmed the importance of the initiatives that support the Gulf and enhance its regional and international effect. His Royal Highness noted the role of the GCC Secretary General in following up on the GCC countries' cooperation marches and the keenness on implementing the decisions that strengthen this cooperation in various economic, social, political and security domains. For his part, the Secretary General of the GCC countries expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his supporting stances to all joint Gulf work, affirming that His Royal Highness's stance in supporting the GCC's march are known, and his directives to the government to speed up the implementation of the Council's decisions intensified Gulf countries' cooperation and coordination. His Royal Highness, uh, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a number of Al Buri and Al Jair family members, where they extended to His Royal Highness sincere thanks and appreciation for offering condolences and consultation to them over the loss of their family member. His Royal Highness underlined that the close relations between the Bahraini leadership and people described it as deep rooted and the catalyst for national achievements. During the meeting, His Royal Highness underscored the importance of maintaining the values of communication. And cohesion in society, citing them as integral parts of the Bahraini society that must be preserved as they serve the purpose of strengthening societies in the face of challenges. The families of Al Buri and Hijr expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his kind sentiments and prayed the Almighty to bestow him with abundant health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received at Rafah Palace the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince commended the Commander-in-Chief's com commitment to further developing the operational readiness of the BDF. He emphasized the important role the BDF plays in safeguarding regional security and the Kingdom's continued prosperity. He stressed His Majesty the King or King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's ongoing support for the BDF's operational development efforts. The Commander-in-Chief expressed his sincere gratitude to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his crucial support and significant efforts to develop the BDF under the leadership of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said on Oman's Blessed Renaissance Day of July 23rd, wishing the brotherly Omani people further progress and prosperity under His Majesty's wise leadership. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince praised the constantly developing amicable ties between the two countries and people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also sent a similar cable of congratulations to the Deputy Premier of Omani Cabinet Affairs, Fahad bin Hamoud Al Said. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi on the glorious July Revolution anniversary. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince wished the Egyptian President lasting good health and well-being and his country further progress and prosperity praising the strong bilateral ties between the two countries and people in various fields. First Deputy Chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Mohamed Fakhro, led the Bahraini Parliamentary Delegation participating in the Arab Parliamentary Union's 28th Extraordinary Session. Fakhro delivered a speech in which he affirmed that the Palestinian cause was and remains the prime cause of the Arab and Islamic nations until the realization of the right to establish an independent Palestinian state on the borders of June 4, 1967, with East Jerusalem as its capital. He noted the flagrant violations of the Israeli occupation of all international and Arab initiatives and peace agreements. He stressed that the law, called Israel the national state of the Jewish people, embodies Zionist extremism in the legislation of the practice of apartheid against anyone who is not Jewish, adding that it is a reflection of the crimes against the Palestinian people. He urged to impose sanctions on the Zionist entity to comply with international legitimacy. Bakhro noted that the parliaments are required to double efforts to consolidate the unity of the Arab nation, maintain the future of its people, and return the right to its owners in Palestine and to protect Arab rights. He also called on Arab parliaments to provide the necessary international protection for the Palestinian people in light of the current developments. Fakhro stressed the importance of providing assistance and aid to the Palestinian people and encouraging governments and countries to increase their material, food and therapeutic support. Last week, a delegation led by Cabinet Affairs Minister Mohammed bin Ibrahim al-Mutawwa presented Bahrain's Voluntary National Review 2018 during the high-level political forum of the UN Economic and Social Council in New York. The review received wide international appreciation with Bahrain's commitment to achieve the 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development Goals. More in this report. فيها مع المجتمع الدولي لبلوغ الأهداف التنموية المستدامة من أجل عالم أفضل حيث يتمتع الجميع بحق العيش في سلام ورخاء ونماء the government, under the leadership of His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Prime Minister, and with the support of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, are focused on achieving economic diversification and sustainable and comprehensive development. Bahrain's decades-long development accelerated with the Comprehensive Development Plan of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the launch of Economic Vision 2030, underpinned by the principles of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness. This led to the successful delivery of the Millennium Development Goals and setting the foundation for the Sustainable Development Goals. Bahrain's delegation, led by Cabinet Affairs Minister Mohammed bin Ibrahim Lim Tawa, presented the first voluntary national review during the high-level political forum of the UN Economic and Social Council in New York. was looking at some of the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, some of the gaps and some of the challenges that face ahead. We in the United Nations are very proud to partner with Bahrain in supporting it throughout this journey. We have supported them by bringing them the technical assistance needed to formulate such a report, to look at some of their policies, development policies that affect the prosperity of a citizen, look at some of the opportunities that Bahrain can partner with the international community. The review compiles Bahrain's sustainable development achievements and efforts to integrate the SDGs in the government action plan.
Minister Al-Mtawa noted that the Kingdom's commitment to implementing sustainable development goals was evident by its participation in drafting the goals on the national, regional and international levels. Within the presentation, there was uh, a general appreciation and, and uh, interest in Bahrain's presentation, uh, especially with regards to uh, being a small island developing states and uh, the environmental challenges that uh, we are facing. There was a diverse representation uh, in, the, in the panel presenting the report, whether it's uh, the Ministry of Housing, the uh, Labor Market Regulatory Authority, the uh, Supreme Council for the Environment, and of course the Foreign Ministry. We are pleased uh, that it was presented in, in a very, uh, very uh, detailed manner. Uh, and we were very glad to see how it was comprehended and appreciated by the uh, attendees. Meanwhile, representative of the United Nations Development Program, Mr. Amin Shargawi, confirmed the UN's support to the Kingdom of Bahrain's journey in reinforcing sustainable development and affirmed that many countries look up to Bahrain to benefit from its experience. The government of Bahrain has been very involved in the negotiations for this global compact for safe, orderly and regular migration. As a country that receives many, many foreign workers, uh, Bahrain has shown a very progressive approach, ensuring that migrant workers in particular have the opportunity to change employers. This is an issue in many countries that has restricted the rights of migrants and that uh, I think this step is, uh, this is good for the economy, it's good for employers, it's much better for migrants. So it has featured, I think, as a very progressive uh, step that uh, we have to hope many other countries, both in that region and uh, throughout the world, uh, will want to follow. Bahrain has one of the best lost in the GCC area when it ca comes to migrant protection. And um, in fact, we are we, looking at your uh, reforms, we are hoping that it will snowball to the rest of the GC, GCC area. Also during Bahrain's participation in the high-level political form of the UN Economic and Social Council, the Labour Fund Tem Keen organized an introductory session entitled Promoting Entrepreneurship and Innovation to Promote Sustainable Development Goals. It was very important at the session to profile to the public what Temkin is actually doing. We are, as a country, um, doing a lot to achieve these goals. Temkin, in particular, is playing a critical role in, as a development agent to make sure that the private sector is working hand-in-hand -hand with the government to achieve these objectives. The Minister of Housing, Engineer Bassam Al Hamar, also participated in the discussion to follow up on the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals of Member States, organized by the United Nations Human Settlement Program, under the theme Together for Comprehensive Cities and Secure Human Settlements. I think uh, from the uh, from the video that shown uh, in the in, in the uh, morning session uh, on housing. Uh, I think Bahrain is in the right way uh, to implement the new urban agenda and the SDG, especially in the housing sector. The Minister of Housing joining us here at the High Level Political Forum to review the experience with implementing Sustainable Development Goals. He spoke about some of the issues that are being addressed as part of both housing in the sense of construction and provision, but also affordable housing. Part of what we are sharing here today in this forum is experiences from countries such as the Kingdom of Bahrain on how to implement SDGs, not just in addressing one issue but achieving multiple benefits and therefore both in the construction and housing sector but also across the economic development sectors, leaving no one behind. We heard a number of very practical experiences and responses being presented here and that is also the point of why the United Nations organizes this high-level political forum. Bahrain's Voluntary National Review confirms the Kingdom's commitment to achieving the 2030 Agenda to build on the Millennium Development Goals and balance the three dimensions of sustainable development, the economic, the social and the environmental. The Voluntary National Review that the Kingdom of Bahrain has presented is yet another international achievement added to Bahrain's success in supporting UN efforts in the sustainable development process. 
Youth City 2030 professional array of programs and activities are ongoing for the second week, focusing on key growth areas of Bahrain youth, aiming to promote creative thinking among them and encourage talent. More on this report with Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. Professionally organized practical projects, formulated according to scientific studies, are ongoing for the second week, focusing on key growth areas of Bahraini youth, aiming to promote creative thinking among them and encourage talent in areas such as leadership, media, information technology, arts, languages, science, sports and much more, confirming the Ministry of Youth and Sports commitment to prepare them to enter the labor market in accordance to the realistic requirements of Bahrain and the world. Each week we have a new tutor come here to, to teach us and each tutor gave us a new material like for example for the first week we learned oil pastel mixed with the acrylic painting for the second, which is the current one, we are learning on the oil painting. Mechatronics engineering, and uh, I'm sent to this program to learn the basics of uh, how to make a car, uh, how to cut and weld and measure the exact sizes uh, for the car. The life-changing experience is nourishing their ambitions and dreams and providing them with new skills and additional knowledge to help them excel in their scientific and practical life, moreover, their artistic abilities. I've been learning like how to harmonize with uh, songs, how to sing in diff different like levels and notes that I didn't know before. And like, I'm learning new songs. I haven't sang in Arabic before, and now I'm singing in it, and it's like a new experience. And I really hope like I get the chance to perform live or like have an experience of what it feels like to be on stage. This has been my third year here in Youth City. Uh, I joined Mixed Sports class number one. Um, it, it, it envelops a number of topics. Um, it goes through self-defense, martial arts. We touch upon Muay Thai as well. We, we also have body pump that happens, I mean, it's basically hit exercises. Youth City 2030 is based on the principles of Bahrain's vision of sustainability, justice and competitiveness. And since strong leaders are necessary for development and the youngsters of today are the leaders of tomorrow, such programs and activities are the best investment for a bright future. Youth City 2030 focuses on key growth areas of our youth, aiming to encourage creative thinking among them and promote talent. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. The Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad tournament successfully kicked off the girls' futsal matches this week and continues to highlight its position as a prime hub for empowering girls and providing a platform for young girls to take up the sport. More in this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. Women's participation in sports has a long history, one filled with major accomplishments by female athletes and important advances for gender equality and the empowerment of women, which was among the many remarkable achievements of the Khalid bin Hamad tournament, which aims to empower Bahraini girls teams and engage them to take up the sport. Um, I think this competition is very important because it allows the girls to immerse themselves in competition that's fierce and gives them the experience so that they can move forward and become better and it allows them an opportunity that normally they wouldn't nor have in Bahrain. The tournament which successfully kicked off the girls matches introduced many girls to the game with many of the traditional barriers to participation being broken down which was made apparent with the increase in number of participating teams to a total of eight teams this year. In a league, it's important for women that we have the same amount of like uh, uh, field necessities as guys, for example. There's not really much of an equal playing field up in the world. Therefore, it's like, amazing that we're having leagues and uh, in Bahrain for women and men. First of all, I would like to thank Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad for this tournament. We are really glad that we have these kind of tournaments in Bahrain and it's really important for girls in Bahrain so um, that they have tournaments like this and it's a really great experience and we are uh, very glad to have these tournaments in Bahrain. 
The league, which was designed for players of all sectors, gave girls an opportunity to play the sport in an enjoyable environment, spreading awareness of the importance of sports among the youth and highlights the excellence of local sports talents. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim.